It's another normal day in the small town of Midwich. Young couple Sam and Zoe are moving here to start a new life. Psychiatrist Susanna ends another therapy session before informing her daughter Cassie that she's leaving for London on a date. Jody comes from the city to see her pregnant sister Deborah. Stuart invites co-worker Amrita to stay at his house so they can have some fun, while his family is away for the weekend. Suddenly, the power begins failing all over town, starting with small flickers that eventually make all devices go off. All the animals are also starting to get disturbed and uncomfortable in their homes. At the police station, Officer Paul receives a report about the town's power lines, but they can't find the source of the problems. Moments later, the power goes out completely. The horses at the local stable are so uncomfortable that they finally push the doors open and run through town as if they were scared of something. In the school, a boy wakes up and creeps out his teacher, Jane, by standing frozen in the middle of the hallway with a blank stare on his face. At that moment, a bright light falls from the sky and hits the school garden, and everyone in town begins passing out right where they are standing. In London, Susanna finishes her date and tries to take the train, but the service isn't working because of the power loss, and she has to take a cab. Meanwhile, Stuart's daughter Charlotte wakes up in her granny's house when she hears her mother Sarah watching the news. Apparently, Midwich has been sealed off because of the power loss, yet there haven't been any posts on social media from the citizens. When Susanna makes it to town, she finds the road blocked by the police, and they won't let her pass, even when she mentions she lives there. Susanna decides to walk through the woods to enter the town through an abandoned road, and she comes across a group of people wearing hazmat suits. They're doing some testing by tying a man to a rope and letting him walk further into town, but as soon as he comes close to a sleeping citizen, the man passes out as well. Some of these people see Susanna and try to stop her, so Susanna begins running away, only to pass out as well. At the police station, Paul meets Bryony, a special agent sent from home office to analyze the situation in Midwich. But they can't make sense of it, especially when the drones they sent come back with nothing but static. At that moment, they're informed of a body that woke up. So Paul and Bryony go to Midwich. We're in a tent outside the border. They meet Susanna. It seems people who weren't there when it all happened wake up quickly. Susanna explains she felt lightness and dizziness before it all went quiet. While Susanna is taken to a shelter, Paul and Bryony approach the town limit. And Paul plays a message Deborah had left on his voicemail before it all went down. While Deborah explains she was afraid of the power issues, the static cut her message off. The next morning, a helicopter is sent to investigate. The chopper takes off normally, but as soon as it flies closer downtown, the pilots lose consciousness and the helicopter crashes on the ground. Phased evacuation is finally approved, and as the people that lived outside the area with the weird unconsciousness are guided out of town, Susanna bumps into Sarah, who just arrived. Neither of them wants to leave without their families, and Susanna begins making a scene, causing soldiers and Paul to come to stop her. Suddenly, everyone's phone begins receiving messages and calls. It seems people are starting to wake up, and Sarah calls Stuart, who panics when he realizes his wife is back. While Amrita's still around, the police begin making preparations for a full investigation. And Brian he realizes Paul hasn't gotten a message from his wife yet, so she volunteers to check on her. When Brian he makes it to the house, she discovers the sisters are still unconscious because they were knocked out while the gas stove had been on. Bryony manages to wake Jody up with no issues, but when she checks on Deborah, it's too late. Both mother and child are dead. As families reunite all over town, lots of women begin feeling something in their bellies. Two months after the incident, everyone in town is trying their best to live a normal life. Paul goes to see Jody and guesses she's pregnant, explaining they need to talk about it. Sam and Zoe are very happy because Zoe's pregnant too, but when they go to the hospital for the first checkup, they're shocked to be sent to a building in the back, filled with many other women and their husbands. An agent from the government informs them that every woman of childbearing age that was in town during the incident got pregnant that day. Because the Midwich incident is considered a red-level threat, Paul wants everyone to sign the Official Secrets Act, but the order isn't well received, especially when they also notice there's a camera recording everything. Zoe tries to call her lawyer, and find signals aren't working here. There are also soldiers arriving to block the exit. Things are getting too tense, so Susanna cuts in, to mediate the situation, pointing out that all these pregnancies can't be a coincidence. Zoe tries to explain she's the real deal, but the other women share their experiences, explaining some of them hadn't been with a man in a long time, or don't like men at all. At that moment, all the town's teenage girls arrive, and reveal they're also pregnant, finally convincing everyone to sign the papers so the government can investigate properly. Afterward, the pregnant women are put through some basic tests. While Suzanne is waiting outside, she's called by Paul, who takes her to the office to introduce her to Bernard, a higher up from home office. All the agents are impressed by Susanna's handling of the situation, and ask her to be the counselor for the pregnant women. When the tests are done, Paul takes Jody to live in his house instead of letting her go back to the city. The next day, Zoe gets a call from the hospital, explaining that none of the fetuses have the father's DNA in them, only the mother's. 
She's starting to consider terminating the pregnancy, but Sam begs her not to, reminding her the doctors told them in the past they only have a 1% chance of having a baby. Stewart gets a text from Amrita saying she's pregnant too. Cassie decides to terminate her pregnancy. She goes to the hospital and meets Nora, who says a friend of hers tried to post about this on social media and the police took it down. The girls are joined by Rachel, and the three of them get ready to sign the termination forms. However, the lights begin flickering, and the three women drop their pens to then walk out of the hospital as if in a trance. Brian is watching all of this on the security cameras and informs Paul that the same thing happened with all the women that tried to terminate the pregnancy. Five months later, the pregnant women continued to live as usual with the help of Susanna's counseling, although their bellies are bigger than they should be. Bryony receives a mysterious file from Bernard with confidential information about the town of Nordisk in Russia. Meanwhile, Zoe tries to leave town on the train, but a mysterious force stops her from moving. She goes to see Susanna, and confesses she felt like it was the baby who stopped her from leaving. Suddenly, lights begin flickering all over town, and every single pregnant woman discovers their waters have broken at the same time. Everyone is taken to the hospital, and after a few hours of arduous labor, the babies are born. They look perfectly normal, although Zoe still watches her child with suspicion. Later at night, the babies open their eyes and reveal them to be glowing. For the next two years, families are told to keep living normal lives, but the government forbids them from having contact with the outside world. Zoe's daughter Hannah and Rachel's son Joe, look at each other through the window, and establish a connection with Amrita's daughter Sunny, who has been living with her mother in the city with the money Stuart sent to them. A few hours later, Amrita and Sunny show up in town to see Stuart, and Amrita explains Sunny insisted on coming. Since the children are growing up very quickly, a special school is prepared for them, and Sam will be their teacher. During the school tour lights begin flickering, and the children run to the window to see Charlotte is bringing Sunny. The kids immediately go to make a circle around Sunny, and offer a school jacket to welcome her into the group. Suddenly, Jane's dog begins barking at the kids and tries to go after them, but the kids turn around and stare creepily at the dog to make him stop. Zoe breaks the circle to take Hannah away, and she gets glared at too. At home, Zoe wonders how Hannah knew that girl, and Hannah says they've always known her. Susanna goes to see Amrita to confirm she got pregnant during the incident. Amrita explains to Susanna that she also tried to terminate the pregnancy, but in the end she walked away from the hospital. Paul arrives to tell Amrita she can't leave town, but Amrita refuses, and tells Sunny they're leaving. Sunny doesn't want to leave, though, she wants to stay with all the others, and she proceeds to name every single special kid by name. Moments later, they conduct an experiment where they use a series of images to confirm all the children share a hive mind, so what one of them sees is seen by the entire group. Zoe sneaks into the office to talk to Amrita, and tell her about how the government pays them to keep the town in isolation. The women exchange numbers, and Zoe advises Amrita to leave while she can. Later, while Zoe is taking her daughter home, Hannah makes her mom stop so they can watch how Jane's dog is retrieved from the creek. Apparently the poor pet is dead, and Hannah smirks at the sight. When they air of home, Zoe is very spooked, and Hannah tells Sam that he's the only one that loves her, because Zoe hates her. Susanna shares the test results with Cassie, who later asks her daughter Evie about it. Evie confirms she can hear her friend's thoughts and that she didn't say anything because she didn't want to scare her mom, but Cassie assures her she'll always be loved. Then Evie finishes a drawing of the dead dog. Later, Sam goes out to get his car ready and chats with Rachel's husband Curtis, who complains about how the government has been handling things. He doesn't consider Joe his son, and he only uses him for the money. The only boy Curtis cares about is David, the son they already had before the incident. Inside, Zoe looks for Hannah, who suddenly announces they didn't hurt the dog and forces her mother to move, causing her hand to get burned by the boiling water. Hannah releases her and repeats that the dog's death wasn't their fault. Amrit is still sure she wants to leave, but Susanna convinces her to give the project a chance. She takes Amrita to have a chat with Sarah while she looks over Sunny, who says she's always known the other kids. When Susanna looks away for a moment, Sunny disappears, and as soon as Amrita gets up to go looking for her, Sunny reappears next to Sarah. The kid asks Sarah for a hug, and as the lights begin flickering, Sunny calls Sarah, Mummy. Hurt, Amrita takes Sunny away. After all the children are put to bed, Zoe goes to see Susanna to tell her what happened with her hand, and how Sunny's arrival made everything worse, but Susanna is skeptical. In the meantime, Amrita tells Sunny it's time to leave, causing all the special kids to wake up. Amrita and Sunny make it to the parking lot where Amrita leaves a message on Zoe's phone before trying to convince Sunny to get in the car. Sunny refuses, and her eyes start glowing as the lights begin flickering, and the special kids approach their windows to look in the distance. Moments later, Charlotte wakes up to find Sunny outside the house. Susanna is called to help, and Sarah explains that Sunny only said that Amrita dropped her there and left. Nobody can contact Amrita on the phone, and Susanna thinks of bringing Sunny with her. But Sunny wants to stay there, and Sarah accepts. At that moment, 
Susanna gets a call from Paul, who's found Amrita's car still in the parking lot. They go to investigate and find all the doors open with only one of Amrita's shoes inside. Meanwhile, Zoe listens to Amrita's voicemail, and when she checks on Hannah, the kid makes a gesture, as if asking her to keep the secret. A few days later, all the children begin attending the special school, showing great intelligence in every subject. Bryony and Paul continue to investigate Amrita's disappearance, but all the security cameras glitched while she was around. Susanna gathers the mothers to tell them about the hive mind, and Cassie thinks they should all accept it as the evolutionary step. Zoe doesn't attend this meeting, and is starting to get tired of Hannah sneaking into her bed every night, because she's been having nightmares since Sunny arrived. In the evening, Susanna notices Evie's having a nightmare and touches her forehead, which causes her to see a vision of a frozen landscape, and a hand against the door. The next day, Paul compares the hotel footage from before and after the glitch, and notices the van next to Amrita's car is different. He finds the missing van in a warehouse that sells frozen products, and a worker tells him the vehicle is broken. Paul inspects it anyway, and when he looks inside, he discovers Amrita's body. At the same time, Susan is checking Evie's drawings when she finds one of Amrita. Later, Bryony and Paul report to Bernard, pointing out that the van shouldn't have stayed cold for so long if it was broken. Bernard asks them to make a cover-up to keep the peace in town. Meanwhile, Paul's son Nathan and Joe play on the swings at school. While waiting for their fathers, Curtis shows up with David, who wants to play on the swings too. So Curtis drags Joe off, and gives David the spot. Joe and Nathan don't like this and begin glaring at David until the swing loses control, hitting Curtis with the seat and making David fall. Susanna goes to see Zoe, who doesn't want to talk, because she hasn't been sleeping well because of Hannah. When Susanna sees the kid, she asks her if she's having nightmares too, but Hannah denies it. At that moment, Curtis arrives with a wounded David and blames Joe for everything, even while Sam says it was an accident. When night falls, Zoe plays Amrita's message to Sam, pointing out that it's weird for her to leave without Sunny. They're suddenly interrupted by Hannah, who wants to sleep with him again. Zoe refuses and drags Hannah to her own bed, causing Hannah to retaliate by making Zoe hit her head against the wall. Sam comes to check on her, and doesn't believe Zoe when she says Hannah made her do it. The next morning, Susanna tries to touch Evie's forehead, but her hand freezes. Sam says hi to Curtis, and learns he won't let Joe go to school as punishment. This angers Hannah and she scrapes Curtis's car, causing him to yell at her. Later, Susanna goes to the school during nap time and requests to see Nathan. She pulls out a recorder and begins asking questions about the swing incident. Nath is uncomfortable by this, and as the lights start flickering, all the kids appear outside and begin pounding at the windows. Nathan starts to scream, and Sam comes to check on him, discovering all the kids pointing at Susanna to blame her. Afterwards, Susanna tells Paul and Bryony about the nightmares the children have been having since Sunny arrived. It seems they're scared about something related to Amrita, but Bryony doesn't take her seriously. Meanwhile, Zoe goes to the train station, and this time she manages to leave without freezing. She goes to London and meets with an old friend, with whom she shares the whole story. The guy kisses Zoe, but Zoe turns him down when she realizes that they're being watched, and the children let her go because they want her out. As she runs away, Bernard watches her from afar. At home, Hannah asks Sam why he let Curtis yell at her. Suddenly, Sam loses all sense of self and leaves the house to beat Curtis up. When Zoe comes home, Sam tells her what happened, and finally believes Hannah's control over them. They agree to work together to deal with this. In the meantime, Susanna encourages Cassie to have a night out while she watches over Evie. As soon as Cassie is gone, Evie asks Susanna to go for a walk and play hide and seek, while Nathan tells Paul that Evie is afraid her grandmother wants to hurt her. Susanna looks for Evie and finds her on the train tracks, accusing her of wanting the children to die. Susanna begins chasing Evie down the tracks when suddenly a train shows up. Fortunately, Paul shows up as well, and saves them just in time. Cassie is with him and thinks this, together with the incident at school, proves Susanna isn't safe, so she and Evie won't be living with him anymore. Sometime later, Susanna is so depressed that another doctor has to take over the counseling sessions. Zoe begins writing a memoir of everything that has happened since the incident, which she shares with Sam, but keeps secret from Hannah. When she finishes it, she prints a copy and hides it under a pile of books. She also prints a second copy that she gives to Bryony. When Bryony returns to the office, she finds Bernard announcing they have the cover story to close Amrita's case. He's faked some tests to prove she had been intoxicated, and walked into the wrong vehicle. Then Bryony tells Bernard about Zoe's memoir, explaining Zoe wants a meeting or she'll publish it. Meanwhile, Susanna receives a message from someone called Earth Monitor asking her to keep searching for the truth. The message has a link that shows her the word Nordosk. In the evening, Paul arrives home to find Nathan sulking because he doesn't like Jody's nose ring. The next day, Paul hears Jody scream in the bathroom and discovers Nathan made her remove the ring, making her bleed. When Paul confronts Nathan, 
The boy says that's what Paul wanted. Starting to see the truth behind these kids, Paul goes to see Susanna and tells her the truth about Amrita. In return, Susanna shares the recording of the conversation she had with Nathan and the message she got on her computer. Paul takes Susanna's recording to the station to clean up the audio and hears a bunch of children screaming in Russian, including the word Nordosk. In the meantime, Zoe meets with Bryony and Bernard and explains she wants to leave with Sam. If they help her, she promises to destroy all the copies of her memoir. At school, Sam gets a message from Zoe telling him she got the deal. Then Sam puts his attention back on the children, who are looking at a bush of poisonous berries. While Zoe makes her way home, she suddenly stops to touch her stomach. Realizing she may be pregnant, she immediately buys a pregnancy test to confirm it, and has to hide it away when Hannah arrives home, and gets suspicious. Afterward, Zoe talks to Sam in private, telling him they should abandon Hannah and leave town. From across the street, Joe sees Zoe by the window hiding the memoir draft. Hannah mentally receives this information, and enters the room to check on it. Meanwhile, Paul sneaks into Bryony's office to steal the Nordost file, where he finds a report about a school for special children. None of them survived, and the report doesn't say why. Meanwhile, Sam takes Hannah to the school picnic, and all the children turn to glare at him. Sam immediately texts Zoe, telling her the kids know they're leaving. Zoe wants to leave anyway, and Sam ditches the picnic while the kids watch him from the woods. Susanna visits Cassie and tells her about the dark place she was in when she became a mother too, but swears she's better now. She tries to explain that these kids are dangerous, and when Cassie denies it, Susanna wonders how Cassie hurt her hand. Seeing as Cassie continues to be blind, Susanna finally confesses that Amrita's is dead, and any parent could be next. At that moment, it begins to rain, and everyone at the picnic returns home. Evie discovers that Susanna is with Cassie and gets furious, saying this can't be stopped because it's too late. Sam and Zoe begin getting ready to leave, but Zoe finds her memoir copy missing. Sam hears a noise outside, and he finds Joe, who uses his power to make him grab a herbicide bottle to end things for himself. Inside, Hannah finds Zoe and tries to make her eat the poisonous berries. Susanna tries to reason with Evie, who wants Sam to be stopped from leaving. When she brings up Nordos, the lights flicker even more. Meanwhile, Bryony finds Paul with a file and confirms that the town of Nordos went through the same pregnancy issues many years ago. She had to lie because those were Bernard's orders. At that same time, Evie confirms this story too, saying the previous group of special children wasn't welcome, so they were locked in a freezing classroom while the adults escaped. Later, the Russians bombed the school. Cassie calls Paul for help, and he rushes to Zoe's house, but Nathan knocks him out to stop him. Susanna swears they don't want another Nordis to happen, and promises the kids will be loved forever. Evie says she better keep that promise, and sends the message to the other kids, who immediately cancel all the deaths they were about to bring on Sam, Zoe, and Paul. Two years later, the town is living in harmony. The parents make sure to treat the kids with love, and this has stopped them from being cruel. The children have quickly grown into teenagers, and Bernard wants to take them to a military base for more advanced testing. Susanna doesn't like this, but Bernard reveals the children themselves ask to see what's outside town. Sam and Zoe had a new daughter named Ellie, but Curtis and Rachel got a divorce. David has to stay a few days of the week with Curtis, which he absolutely hates, and his tantrum is seen by Hannah from across the street with glowing eyes. Later, David escapes from his dad's home, and tries to enter the school, but finds the fence locked. Later, Susanna and Paul take Evie and Nathan to the military base, although the adults aren't authorized to watch the tests. While Evie and Nathan are tested, the lights begin flickering in both the base and the school, and Sam discovers the children aren't in the classroom. Sam goes to look for them, but falls unconscious when he approaches the cellar stairs. At the same time, everyone is also knocked out at the military base. The power issues cause the school fence to open, and David makes his way inside, going down the cellar stairs to discover all the kids are standing in a circle while their eyes glow. Joe sees him, and David gets so scared that he runs away, dropping his toy on the way out. At that moment, Sam wakes up and sees David too. At the base, Susanna and Paul are woken up by a gunshot. It turns out the kids made the men shoot a fellow soldier. Nobody comments on it though, and Evie and Nathan are allowed to go home. In town, Rachel rushes out of the house when she sees David show up, and she's horrified to discover her son's eyes are white. Later, at the hospital, Susanna tries to ask David questions, but the child only says the word school. He also keeps having nightmares because, as before, when he tried to escape the school, the kids surrounded him in the forest and deleted his memory. When Paul gets home, he tells Jody about the base, only to be interrupted by Nathan while holding a sharp object. He tells his parents that he doesn't want to leave them. Sam can't stop dreaming about David running from the school, and goes to check the stairs, only to find the toy. He shows it to Zoe, who asks him not to go to Paul in order to protect Ellie. At the hospital, Rachel overhears Bernard telling Joe that he let David jeopardize the project. Horrified, 
Rachel grabs David and leaves the hospital. Susanna is riding to Earth Monitor explaining the latest trouble, when she gets a call from Rachel to warn her about them. But the communication is cut off when Joe finds her missing in the room. All the kids get the information and leave their houses to block the road. So when Rachel shows up in her car, they make her crash, killing her. The next day, Bernard has a meeting with the parents to inform them the kids don't feel safe anymore, and they'll be taken away. Nora and Jane are furious because it means the past five years were for nothing. Cassie asks Evie to see reason, but her daughter hurts her by completely ignoring her. Later, Bernard orders David to be kept in the hospital instead of sending him back to Curtis. At the end of the day, Sam finally gives in, and shows Paul the toy. Paul calls Susanna, and together they go to check the school cellars, where they find a burn circle on the ground, proving David saw something. Suddenly, the electricity begins flickering, and Paul goes outside to check, finding two kids that take the keys away from him, and lock the cellar door, leaving Susanna trapped inside. The children take Paul back to town and ask him to stay with Nathan for the night. Paul wants to save Susanna anyway, and when Nathan tries to stop him, Paul discovers the boy keeps a sharp object in his hand. Nathan explains that if he's in pain, the others can't know what he thinks. At that moment, Susanna sees Bernard entering the cellar, and notices his eyes glow too. The next morning, Curtis pays a dealer to get him a gun. At Zoe's home, Hannah threatens with killing Ellie until Sam finally admits he found the toy. Jane comes to work, and finds Susanna, releasing her. Susanna runs home only to find Cassie has overdosed and must be taken to the hospital. Bryony and Paul ask to talk to Susanna, who reveals she knows about Nordos, and that one of the kids did survive the bombing, that kid is now Bernard. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by Joe, who wants Susanna to leave with him. Paul tries to defend her, but Joe tosses him against the wall. Susanna agrees to leave with him, and Joe begins interrogating her, as he threatens with breaking the glass ceiling on her. His plans are stopped by Curtis who immediately shoots Joe, and the guard that comes out. Joe's death is felt by all the children, including Evie, who is visiting her mother. When she tries to leave, Cassie convinces her to take her along. Curtis enters the hospital killing as many guards as needed, and grabs David to escape together. On their way out, they're stopped by Susanna, who points out that the kids won't let him leave. Her point is proven when a bunch of kids show up, and try to make Curtis shoot David, but Paul shows up, and shoots Curtis first. Afterwards, Susanna discovers Cassie is gone and gets a call from Evie telling her Cassie will be leaving with them the next day. Then Susanna gets a message from Earth Monitor asking her to stop them. Paul returns home and discovers Nathan is gone. Jody explains the boy didn't want to leave, but he had to, and he left a note saying, help me. All the parents are called for a meeting, confirming all the kids have left their homes, and now they're hiding in the school. Suddenly, the army arrives, which not even Bryony knew about, meaning the children are controlling them. A soldier orders curfew for the day, and all the adults are sent home. Paul sneaks out, and goes to see Susanna to work on a plan to stop the kids. Susanna wants to rescue Cassie, and Paul asks her to rescue Nathan too, because he doesn't want to be one of them. Susanna goes to the school to talk to the children and Bernard, who don't believe her when she says she wants to come along because she loves them. Suddenly, another mother shows up, and they allow her to give her daughter one last hug. However, the mother tries to take the girl away, and the soldiers shoot her. Cassie finally sees the truth, but Susanna pretends to be fine with this. To gain their trust, she's finally accepted into the group, and sent to the basement with Cassie to protect her from an incoming blackout. Before they lock the door, Susanna gives Nathan the note he left, and asks him to warn Paul. Meanwhile, Paul is working on making a bomb. He gets a call from Nathan, who uses pain again to hide from the kids the fact he's telling his father to hide. In return, Paul manages to warn Sam and Zoe, who hide with their baby in their neighbor's basement. At that moment, all the kids form a circle outside the school that causes power to go out, and all the unprotected people to fall unconscious. Then the soldiers visit all the houses to remove any proof that the kids were ever there, since this second blackout was performed to erase everyone's memories. In the morning, the kids visit their parents to confirm they forgot everything. Nathan is sad to see Jody not recognize him, but he also sees Paul hiding nearby and confirms he's fine. Hannah visits her parents too, and they pretend they don't recognize her either, but Hannah gets suspicious when Ellie accidentally says her sister's name. Paul takes the chance to sneak into one of the army trucks and knocks out a soldier to steal his clothes. Now he can pretend to be one of them. Moments later, Zoe and Sam are getting ready to leave, but they're approached by Hannah again, who wants to punish them for lying. However, when she sees Ellie, she changes her mind, and asks her parents to keep the secret before leaving. At the school, Susanna sees Nathan return and tells him to run away with Cassie, so the pair escapes through the woods. The soldiers prepare a bus for the children, and Paul leaves the bag with a bomb inside. The children notice Nathan is missing, and send the soldiers after him. But when Nathan accidentally steps into to a bear trap, the pain makes the kids lose track of him. 
Susanna tells them that Nathan obviously is a danger to the hive and should be cut off. Also that she's the new hostage, so they don't need Cassie either. The kids see her point, and release Nathan from the connection. Moments later, the bus leaves with the kids while Bernard and the soldiers escort them with their trucks. When they make it outside town, Bernard receives a message telling him about the discovery of an unconscious soldier, prompting him to stop the trip to investigate. Paul has no choice but to activate the bomb now, making the bus explode with the kids and Susanna inside. From afar, Cassie, Sam and Zoe watch the explosion, and understand they're finally free. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.